Good morning, everybody. This is E. Marcel Pertut, and welcome to another edition of the of Fighting Peaches. This edition, we are going to play the presser of Georgia State football head coach Del McGee following the team's victory over Chattanooga last night. We are recording this on September 8th, 2024, and we were able to attend the presser of Coach McGee following the team's victory on September 7th. And before we get to the presser, as always, to follow everything that we do, go to the mothership, the sportsenquire.net, premier site for news and notes in the world of sports. We can also head to our social media platforms on Twitter, slash X, Instagram, and uh, Facebook. And you go on there, look us up under the Sports Inquirer or email substitute. And finally, make sure you share, like, and subscribe our content on our video and audio host including YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and more. Once again, search for us under e Substitute or ITN Mars Substitute. And under the Sports Choir, you should be able to find us and like what we have going on there. Well, as I mentioned, I was able to attend the presser of Georgia State football head coach Del McGee following the team's 24-21 to victory over Chattanooga. I'll have more on the specifics of the contest uh, as we break it down. But first, let's get to Coach McGee and his thoughts on the victory. Really appreciate our guys for fighting through, never giving in. Um, I know that wasn't an ugly win, but I really appreciate our guys. I think in the long run, we learn a lot from this, and we were in a tight ball game with a team when it's really when it's going to really count. I think we'll be able to draw back from this moment and, uh, and learn from it. A lot of mistakes early, um, self-inflicted wounds. Um, so we just got to go back to. Not necessarily drawing board, we just got to clean up things and continue to grow, get better. Uh, but I am very happy. It is hard to win, and we're going to celebrate wins around here when we get in the field. Any other questions? Obviously, like you mentioned, a lot to clean up, but what does it say each of those times you went down immediately responded with a touchdown drive? Yeah, it shows a lot of composure by our kids and our coaches for responding and not panicking. Uh, it showed, showed a lot of growth. Um, unfortunately, we didn't didn't seize momentum and just take it over during the game. We had opportunities. Uh, defense got a big stop, and then we basically shot ourselves in the foot by getting the penalties and then missed the field goal. <coughs> um, the punter did an outstanding job of punting the ball to the two. Then Kenyatta Watson downed it and ended up going for 98. Uh, had a man-to-man -man coverage and got out and ran. So um, got to learn from them things, uh, get better. But I'd rather learn from a, a victory than a loss. So there is some positives to take from it. And we'll look at the tape, see what corrections we need to make. Um, I think we need to play more players in, in certain situations too. So those are things that uh, I'm looking at as a coach. And I'm a challenge our staff on that. Um, so like I said, I'm never satisfied. I am happy, but we got some work to do. Um, got a tough Danny team coming into town. And then up. 3-1 in the turnover margin basically was the difference in the game. Big turnovers forced by your defense there. Yeah, that was outstanding by our defense. We were preaching that all week, and it came into fruition tonight. And I thought they were loose with the ball and thought they gave, they were going to give us some opportunities, and uh, our defense took full advantage. Could have had another one. Uh, our G had opportunity for one as well, but very happy with the turnover margin, uh, explosive play margin. I bet we were probably down. Uh, we got to create more explosive plays on offense and uh, try to limit that 92 yard drive. That, that was a big, big driving game. But like I said, I'm proud of the coaches, proud of our staff, proud of the uh, uh, student body, faculty, everyone that showed up to the game. And more importantly, I'm so happy for our kids to get the victory. Coach, up here. Uh, you were two for seven on third downs in the first half and had a much improved mark in the second. What was the difference just offensively? And uh, those third down conversions. Yeah, they weren't as long. I mean, the first half, it was basically third, nine, to 10, to 11, 12. And uh, in the second half, it was a little bit more manageable. Um, quarterback made the right reads, the right decisions. Um, they, it, it wasn't so much what they were doing, it was more so what we didn't do from an execution standpoint. You know, check the ball down, let the ball carriers convert after the catch. So those are things that were glaring that. We got to make sure we reiterate to uh, the guys on the field and make sure 
those things don't happen again. That's the thing. <clears throat> every game is different. Every opponent is different. So um, you just can't carry things over from one opponent to the next because every opponent presents different uh, problems and situations. And, and um, so we still got a lot of learning to do with situational football. And, and uh, as coaches, we're just getting on the same page with a lot of different things. So, but I'm proud of our guys. And uh, like I said, I'm very happy for the win. Yeah, and you had 35 rushing attempts uh, in the contest and even a lot of short passes. Uh, how effective was that, just keeping control of the ball in those situations with short passes and even rushing the, the ball? Um, it was what we had to do for this game because they were really uh, <clears throat> taking away the deep balls, so to speak. And they were just breaking up, trying to make tackles. So you got to kind of adjust your game plan to what and how the defense is playing. So let our quarterback learn in the second half to just dump the ball off and let the ball carries and receivers make plays after the catch. Yeah, and then uh, what about Justin Abraham? It's fourth quarter, gets runs to his own teammate, has to leave the field, comes right back, gets a big uh, big sack for you. Just what about his leadership and just his big contributions for the team? Yeah, he's an outstanding leader. Uh, he, you know, he's one of the heart and soul members on that side of the ball along with several others. So really proud of our guys for how they finish. Uh, proud of Justin being here and being the leader that he is. That shows a lot of grit and toughness for him to come back and, and make a play like that. So uh, like I said, we're going to look at the tape. Uh, definitely didn't play to our standards. We got to learn how to play cleaner. Uh, we got to play four quarters of football, uh, not in spurts, not be so sporadic, and just execute at a higher level in all areas. How important was it to stop the run like you guys did tonight? It was very important. Um, that, that was a message to the staff. I uh, thought that Chattanooga was going to try to shorten the game, and, uh, uh, and they did a good job. I thought we played a little slow on offense. Uh, I wanted to play with a little bit more tempo, but uh, we just got so many different personnel groupings that it, it kind of don't allow you to play a little tempo at times. So. I think the tempo of the game fell into their hands. And uh, like I said, we didn't capitalize when we had the opportunity on offense. We capitalized when we had the opportunity, and I mean, the score probably would have been a lot different. But got to give Chattanooga credit for executing and making plays, and, and then giving our guys credit for, you know, not folding the tent and responding when we had to. You know, you say that different guys step up according to what the game plan is. It seemed like first had. His number called a good bit tonight. Was that he was just the guy in the right spot tonight? Oh, uh, he was. You know, he had some uh, injuries earlier in the week uh, where he stretched, uh, was injured from the Georgia Tech game. So his his play was limited. Uh, I don't even know if he played 10 snaps this game. I'm not sure about it. He did, but uh, hopefully he'll recover fully and he had to be 100% next week for us. Uh, maybe that tag was hot and he made the plays. He actually dropped that one. That he could have made, so it's, it's always some give and take there. But um, proud of the, proud of his effort. We had a hell of a catch on the fade ball in the end zone that kind of got everything kind of started. So that was a really good throw and really good job competing for the football and coming down with it. Nick Christian take even another step tonight. Um, what you want to see from him? Uh, we still got a work in progress. Um, we're still evaluating. Still going to look at the film and address the things that we need to address and um, you know we just got to continue to uh, install what our guys can do and uh, try to limit some things from our <clears throat> mental capacity at times and, and just try to put our guys in the best situation to be successful. Um, everything is about cohesion, trying to find our identity on what we can do. You know, there's things there but do we have somebody to screw something up and you know, it, it, it just, everyone was taking turns at, at a moment. So it was a O-line, a receiver, different person. So we just got to clean up our play, our play calling. And maybe it's too much on our guys. That's something that we got to look at as coaches to see do we need to dial it in and uh, limit the game plan. I know you're a pretty one day at a time, one task at a time kind of guy. So when did it, like, dawn on you that this game was going to fall on your birthday? Oh, it felt, I knew that when I saw the schedule. 
when I first saw the schedule, so it didn't it didn't like it was uh today. Oh, it was my birthday. I go to game. So as soon as I got hired, I knew I had a birthday game. So uh, yeah. pretty good present. It was an outstanding present. Mm -hmm. Can't be happier. And like I said, it's a lot better winning than losing. And it's a lot of learning moments from this tape, and you really take it. And, uh, we're a pro as a team. And, we're still in our, what we call the first quarter of our season. These first few games don't really have an impact on what we ultimately want to do. And, um, you know, we're, we're looking at it set. We do still, we want to win all the games in this quarter. Uh, but we know the real quarter starts in the second quarter uh, after our bye week after this week. So we're going to put this game to rest, make the corrections needed, and put a good game plan together for Daniel and um, try to come up with a Next week. Did you get a birthday cake at least? Not yet. Um, I haven't got nothing. Got game ball from Coach. I'm gonna try to call out so much appreciative of that. Um, but game ball is close to the kids. They, like I said, they, they never, you know, flinched. Um, answered offense answered every single time. We were down. Uh, our defense did the same thing. Stopping when we had to and. We ran the ball when we had to to uh, close the game out. So, a lot of positives from the game that we can grow from, and that's what we're going to really concentrate on. Um, and like I said, we're, we're a team and an organization that is growing, learning each other, um, and, and trying to find more people that we can add to the mix. Uh, I think we're, we're limiting ourselves from a roster standpoint um, certain, in certain positions, and we're going to figure out a way to. Put our best guys on the field and, and let them play. How you doing, Coach? Yeah. It's not my new way possible. And that was Coach McGee on the, the victory and uh, this the team's overall performance. Just some, some, some highlights from uh, the contest. Uh, as I meant, I asked the question of uh, the struggles on third downs uh, in the first in the first half. Actually, let's get our statistics up. And while I do that, as always, to follow everything that we go do, go to the mothership to sports You can also go to our social media platforms on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and our audio and video hosts, including YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and more. Make sure you head to those contests. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, Georgia State actually was two of seven on third downs and 0 for 1 on fourth downs in the first half. They were able to improve those statistics and overall finished uh, with a conversion rate of 7 of 16 uh, for third downs in the, in, for the entire contest. Uh, still didn't convert a fourth down. But you saw much improvement there on the contest. And he talked so much about the team being able to respond on, uh, to contact, to the adversity. Uh, they uh, Chattanooga took an early lead, 7 to 3 at the 127 mark on fourth and goal uh, score from the one yard line. And on the next drive, Georgia State was able to get a touchdown, uh, you know, on a, including a big third and long pass from Christian Bayer to Ted Hurst. Uh, and uh, on the same drive, Georgia State took a 10 to seven lead uh, with 1231 left in the second quarter on a 19 yard TD pass uh, to Jordan Ford. Uh, and then also the defensive effort uh, big contributions from Katie McDaniel uh, forcing a fumble uh, from the Mox quarterback. Now, Georgia State was unable to score on that possession, uh, but once again, on the next one, uh, McDaniel forced an enforcement. Now, he had forced it. that first from play that I mentioned, it actually was on third down, forced to punt. On the Mox next possession, uh, McDaniel hit the uh, Mox, hit, uh, Mox receiver Sam Phillips. Uh, from behind, trailing on the play, and was able to cause a fumble while the mocks were driving, covered by the Panthers. And so they were able to get these turnovers to stall uh, Chattanooga's offensive possessions. And then in the second half, it was still the same uh, deal where the, the mocks took the lead again early in the third quarter on a two-yard touchdown run. Uh, but then Georgia State responded with another big uh, score um, on the on the contest uh, with a 22-yard touchdown 
from from Christian to Hearst, uh, you know, again, so just a big day overall, uh, you know, for Hearst. And so you just saw once again, that they continue to respond uh, in the contest. And finally, the it was a back and forth affair so throughout the entire game. And then ultimately at the end, uh, you, and as I mentioned, Justin, that was my question with Justin Abraham, uh, he ran into his own player, making a defensive player early in the fourth quarter, had to be taken off of the field with support. Uh, he had to be helped off the field. And on that same drive, uh, Chattanooga took the lead 21 to 17 uh, with 11:33 left in the contest on a pass to Sam Phillips, 84 yard touchdown uh, pass. So this is where the, once again, Georgia state found a way uh, to come back in the contest on uh, the next, on the next drive. Uh, let's see a big pass to Dukes on third and seven to get the first down. And ultimately Christian was able to find Freddie Brock, an inside shuffle pass for a 12 yard touchdown. Actually, they changed that. And I'm glad they did because I was saying in the press box that that didn't look like a pass. They technically call it the pass a little forward, but it was a pitch backwards, I thought. And that's, or at least a lateral. And that's what it, and ultimately the result was. Uh, but in the end, Brock scored a 12 yard touchdown with 701 left in the contest. And later on in the same, on the mock's next possession, that's where I said Abraham came back on the field and actually had a sack on an inside rush uh, to force Chattanooga on th- it was third down, force Chattanooga to punt, and ultimately Georgia State was able to hold off uh, the Panthers. Uh, the Panthers were able to hold off the mocks uh, as Tennessee Chattanooga was driving uh, on the final possession, and uh, Jiron uh, Gilmore intercepted the ball for Georgia State, ultimately leading to the victory. So this is where uh, you saw Georgia State come back multiple times in the contest and take the lead. And as I mentioned, the rushing was a factor to me as well. Where Georgia State had 35 rushes for 153 yards. Now that average per rush is maybe not the most stout, uh, but it just showed the commitment to you. And they used a short passing game, uh, 26 passes as well. So just Using that short passing game, possession, ball control, that seemed to be the way to go in the contest. So it's a very big win for, for Georgia State. And, uh, yeah, so that was the presser from uh, from Coach Del McGee. And we will be at the presser for their – they prepare to face Vanderbilt. Uh, obviously, very interesting contest personally. When the alma mater comes to town to play a team that you're covering, that's always an interesting dynamic, but we'll be professional. Um, with it and everything. But yeah, Vanderbilt does come into town. Uh, Vanderbilt 2-0 on the year, coming off a big win over Alcorn State uh, this past weekend. Uh, So both teams coming into this upcoming contest with uh, victories. Uh, So it should be a very interesting contest. We'll have a lot more uh, later on in the week previewing that specific contest. Uh, But always thanks for listening and watching this edition of the Fighting Peaches. As always, go to the platforms on social media with Twitter slash X, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can also go to our audio and video host at YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And if follows fails or if follows goes well, go to our host site, thesportsinquire.net. You'll be able to see all of our archive videos, audio, articles, and more. Thank you for watching listening to this latest edition of Fighting Peaches. Until next time, good fight, good night, and be safe.